bring it back, but it's more than basic. Cause a portion of his rap at the core is ancient. It's supported like a pack of some warm servations. Are important like the fact that we're bored of fake shit. More creative, have the floor, so take it. Travel to the core is a normal placement. Tattoos on the so, uh... I'm not the type of person who likes to do things just because that's how it's always been done. In fact, I really don't like that at all. I like to examine everything I do and decide it's the right thing to do and do it because it's the right thing to do. Not because my mom did it or because your mom did it or because society did it for hundreds of years. I'm not a real traditional guy. I'm not untraditional. I just like to examine my tradition and do them because they're the right thing to do. Well, that applies to most traditions, but not traditions that are also uh, delicious. Because this New Year's Day, I made black eyed peas and fried chicken and uh, had hog jowl. And I did that not because it was lucky, but because it's just good food. But I do it every New Year's because that's the way my family's always done it. I have no idea why, and I have no intention of examining why until I remembered that I do a podcast, and that's uh, some things that you might not know, and I definitely didn't know. And You know, if you do hear new information, I like it when you can tell people that you heard the new information on Tattoo with Children, which is what you're listening to, Tattoo with Children. I am your host, Flavor Rand C. Day, Carson Me and C.B., is Selfie Chimp, the Dread Pirate Benjamin, across from us both, is a stool with uh, two phantom butt cheek imprints because CIO knows actual butt is still on vacation. But we're here. Ben? What's up? What it do, Key? Well, you know, uh, it's 2020, and uh, we're going into it hardcore. Yeah, we are. Uh, we're not ready. We're no. never ready. No one's ever ready. No one's ever ready for the new year, but we all like to get ready for the new year. That's like one of our favorite things to do at the end of an old year is to get ready for the new year. But we're never ready uh, when the new year actually hits, and I sure as hell wasn't ready. I'll get into that uh, a little bit later. But first, why do we eat black eyed peas on New Year's? Ben, do you know? So, okay, do you? does your family eat black eyed peas on New Year's? My family does, yes. I do not. You do not? No, I have never eaten black-eyed peas on New Year's, with the exception of when my grandmother, God rest her soul, uh, made them. Okay, which makes sense. Yeah, both of, my grandmothers are the de- both of my grandmothers are dead, so fuck that noise. Okay, okay, I hear you. Yeah, I, like I... I it's, it's because you don't like the, the taste of black-eyed peas. No, I love black-eyed peas. Okay, I just, just don't. I just, I just don't associate it with that particular day. Okay. It has nothing to do with that day for me. Okay. Why, why, do, why do we do that? Why well, do okay, do that? okay. The reason, okay, the reason why we do there's <coughs> it's it's a tradition and it's a superstition, and so as such, it has more origin stories than Spider Man. Okay. Uh, here's one of them. All right. Uh, so the Civil War is happening. Winter hits. The North has pretty much raped the South. Sure. There's nothing to eat. The the uh, the, the good old boys of Confederacy are are dying by the dozens. Uh, from uh, the, the hungers because it's it's winter time, right? And so uh, they start uh, uh, going to farms, and uh, they're trying to help their boys out. And so they go into their larders and they find nothing there except for the uh, old black eyed peas and a little bit of salt pork. Okay, saints be praised. They saved the the uh, Confederate soldiers that winter. Now that one sounds like bullshit. Uh, mostly because I severe. I heard all. Uh, I've already done this tradition uh, in my uh, black families, and you know, I don't know many black families that celebrate shit that was started by the Confederacy. It's just not, I don't think that happens all that often, and so it did sound like bullshit to me. Here's a second story, which I like better. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's December, late December, eighteen sixty two. And uh, when the new year hits, the slaves only have what they've been given to eat, which is normally uh, the old vegetables. Okay. And so uh, they have black eyed peas and salt pork to celebrate the new year with. 
And just what happens that that new year, January 1st, 1863. Jesus fuck. Is the exact day that the Emancipation Proclamation went into effect. I like that story better too, but 1863? Yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah, that's how I felt about it too. It's like, that seems, that, that's, that's a harsh. And also, how many times do you really celebrate things from slaves? It's not often. It does happen. Juneteenth is a thing, you know? Well, okay, but see, that, that gets into a weirder thing. What's and that? this is one of the reasons we fuck with each other, because you don't understand me. And I appreciate that, <laughs> yeah. because no one can. Right. But I actually celebrate more things that slaves do, for instance, making my mark. Yes. Like, I make, yeah. my, I make my mark at least five times a day. Yeah. And every time I make my mark... I think about the fact that I'm making my mark rather than signing my signature. Yeah. 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 Uh, ben does weird shit, guys, in case you didn't realize. I don't know. This is episode 51. You probably know this by now, but beer's a weird. Yeah. No, I'm, it, I mean, I still remember the first time I heard the line, uh, my people 70 deep and starving. Yeah. Like Riza, yeah. like Riza, Riza. fucking <laughs> Riza fucking broke me, man. Yeah, he, I would, he, he, like, he hit us all with and, that one, and like it, like it just weighed on me. Like that's my life. It wasn't like I was trying to um, like put myself in someone else's shoes, right? I'm curious if that's how my people got here. Yeah, it spoke. It spoke. Yeah, to your, uh, because it was just like, it, yeah, it was like. Oh, that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's my life. We're 70 deep and stuff. See, like, I'm, I'm actually, like, it would have made, it, I think Rizzo would have absolutely loved it if back when that line hit, this kid from East Texas right. wrote him a letter and said, man, it really spoke to me. Yeah, right. And with a little picture and saw a picture. Right, yeah, a picture, a, little, a picture, a little, ben. little Ben Harbuck. <laughs> like, like, dude, you fucking broke me with that. Because See, it was, kid doing a week in the dude, I've, I have fucking printed, I've fucking printed probably, I've, I have printed pictures of the old slave ship layouts. Yeah. Since like 2001. Yeah. And I've never got the courage to get a tattoo artist to like put that on me. Like I've printed it for that reason to yeah, take okay. it, to take it to a tattoo, like the, cause they have the old layouts. Yeah, they do. The old schematics. Where the white dudes, in my head. where the white dudes in the offices would be like, well, architecturally, we have to be able to fit seventy people yeah. in thirty square feet in, into this, you, uh, you, you, you know, bottom boat, right? And how are we going to do it? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And that, like it, just that imagery in my mind is so strong that that's where we came from. Yeah, that's where we come from. That's so what, that, that the, the that black is, eyed pea story is better, by the way. Yeah, it's it's a the, the black eyed peas from, from from the slave story. That's Sorry. that's a much better story <laughs> than uh, you know slaving uh, saving Johnny Reb from his own stupidity. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I I think they're both bullshit. Quite honestly, I think the actual truth is that black eyed peas are a late crop. They're easy to preserve, so they're always available in winter. And uh, then you have the salt pork who. There's no Southerner alive who had any lick of sense that didn't have a cabinet full of salt pork in his well, life. Well, I can tell you this too, from a gardener's perspective, mm -hmm. dude, you can grow, you can grow black eyed peas any time of the year. Exactly. I mean, where we live in, yeah. e in in East Texas, if you and I went out there right now in 54 degree weather and the rain and planted b black eyed peas in the forest, they'd there's be, a they'd, they'd, be they'd, ready. They'd, they'd they'd be fine by like uh, I don't know April. Yeah, May. They, they, pe they pe be good. People say no. They need seasons. Not black eyed peas black in the eyed south, peas, man. No. They don't need a season. The season is when they when they grow. So we always <laughs> so we always have them. So it's it's just really uh, it's just just really easy to have that in wintertime. And so they're people, fucking delicious. And they're delicious. They're delicious. And so yeah. you, you have them in wintertime. Uh, so uh, they're considered lucky. Uh, the cabbage that you have New Year's that's representative of money, of course. Okay. The cornbread. So the cabbage is representing of your long money, your okay. long grain. Okay. The cornbread represents your pocket money, your change, okay. those golds, like gold coins. Okay. Uh, the the pigs have always considered a uh, a symbol of opulence mm -hmm. and uh, greed. You know, yeah. Yeah. greedy like a pig. 
And so you want to get fat in the new year. And so you know what white people are doing now? What's that? Pet pigs. They've been doing that for a long time. Have you seen this, though? They're, they're like, I, I see these, like, crown colony houses. They got, yeah. like, marble shit, right? Yeah. And instead of getting a dog, they got a motherfucking pig. Yeah, I've seen, I have seen that a lot. That's fucked up. My daughter is really, for her whole life, She's yeah. wanted a, a, a pet pig. I have yeah. told her several times, you can get a pet pig. Yeah. But that motherfucker's going down when he's big enough. <laughs> I mean, that's you just need to get her. Is. You need to get her. So one of my friends got, uh, they got like a little pygmy pig. Uh-huh. Like it, like at its full grown, I'm making the motion of about 18 inches. Yeah, it's a, it's a um, small. Uh, yeah, it, 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 like it's a tiny pig. Yeah. And I, that way it won't get big enough. Yeah, I don't want that shit in my house, though. I understand that, but they're really fucking cute. I mean, it, and by the way, they're, they're fucking cute. They're, <laughs> they're incredibly smart and they're incredibly clean. Okay. Yeah, right. But I just have, I have a policy in my life that I do not name things that are delicious. Like, I don't eat dogs mm-hmm. because dogs are not delicious. Right. They have names. They have, so they have so, names. So they get names. Chickens? I'm sorry, chickens. I do love you. Right. But you taste good. You don't get a name. Yeah, you can't, you can't get it. You can't name a chicken. That can't be like Fred. No, it can't be Fred. Because we're going to kill Fred and eat him. going to kill and eat Fred. <laughs> I don't name cows. <laughs> People name that. There's old Bessie. So what the fuck are you naming that piece of hamburger for? That is steak, ribs, and burgers. That's all the name it needs. So no, she's not getting a pet. I so she can okay. get a she can get a pet pig when she's uh, sixteen because then she can grow it to, for two years and get the fuck out of my house. That's how yeah. Know, okay. So. All right. Uh, so that's like so, your that is smart. You got an exit strategy for your kid. Yeah. That's I like that. See, this is where tattooed with children gets back to parenting. So, <laughs> so you're so you're gonna buy her a pig at sixteen, that and true. then at eighteen you're gonna kill that motherfucker and have bacon. That that's my plan exactly. And then your daughter is not gonna speak to you until hopefully what twenty one? It'll twenty two, twenty three. Okay, right right about the time right. when, she, when she really needs me again. Okay, all and right. We'll, and then we'll start a business, guys. This I mean, is good parenting. It could, it could be a, a pig husbandry business. I don't know. It'll be interesting. All right. Uh, the uh, What am I up to? I got the... Okay. So all that's lucky. All right. Uh, I found out in uh, research that chicken is could be considered unlucky. Okay. So people should... Uh, you should to avoid that on New Year's. Mm. And I found that absolutely fascinating. I was shocked mm. because my family has always said you got to eat fried chicken on New Year's. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody else does that. Like that may just be something that my grandmother and my mother came up with because kids will always eat fried chicken. Well, and it also, yeah, that's true, but it's also uh, what's available. Again, it goes back to what's available. Yeah. Chicken never, the market on chicken never changes much. No. You, you've never gone to the store and they're like, well, it's $10 a bird. Right. That's never happened. Or like in the know, history of a chicken shortage. In the history of America, they have never said, here's a chicken, it's 10 bucks. Yeah. No, you go to you, you go to the grocery store and they're like, well, it's 30 cents. Well, it's $1.30. Yeah. It might be two thirty now. I don't know. Like but it's, but, it's, like, it's, but it's, that's it's over. It's always the cheapest thing yeah. in the store. Right. So that might be part of it. It's just what's available. Yeah. I believe that's I believe that that's that's what it is. Like, yeah. but I'm not. So I couldn't figure out if everybody did that or if it was just my folks. Yeah. And so, like, I asked I asked Twitter, uh, you know, what, what what did you guys do? I asked particularly who were people up north mm-hmm. uh, if they did the whole black eyed peas thing. Cause I was curious if it was really a thing that they only did in the south. Mm-hmm. I I suspect that it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's it's a very uh, ag- ag- agrarian type thing, and the north okay. is less about that than the south is. Yeah, and you know, and so I was if CIO if uh, CIO Noah was here, he could tell me uh, what his family did, but he's mm. not here. Uh, he told me he gets back. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the reason why uh, we do the whole Black Eyed Peas New Year's thing. Okay. It's I don't I don't think it's it's a it's a mystical thing at all. I will continue to do it every New Year's Day, uh, probably for the rest of my life, because quite like I said, I I do things that are delicious. Yeah, I, and I think that's completely fair. I think that's reasonable. Um, I just, yeah, I I don't know. I don't know if as I get older, I'm going to do more of those things, or as I'm older, if I'm going to do less. Mm-hmm. This is a really weird, interesting. That's, that, well, this is the reason why I brought this up, actually. 
So one of the things that I've been thinking about, uh, you know, of course, I listen to Gary Vee. You know, mm-hmm. my, my pastime is to, especially when I get fucked up, which in 24 hours is two or three times. Um, I'll go, fucked up, he doesn't mean he's doing drugs or drinking. It just means he's mental state fucked yeah, up. Yeah, my mental state gets off. Uh, yeah, I'm not Little Wayne. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, when I say I'm fucked up, I mean like my head's not right. Um so I went and listened to this uh, this this little podcast he did uh, with Amy, I think Landino. Uh, who's he? No, she. Uh, no, who, who's, who's uh, he? Gary V. Gary V. Okay. Gary V. Apparently, they did like an uh, episode in the two hundreds, and then uh, now they're on three thirty something. Right. And she wrote a book called "Good Morning, Good Life" because she's not a morning person, uh-huh. but she recognized that changing her f- habits in the morning led to her success. Okay. And so she wanted to help other people. So she wrote this book. Now, I found that fascinating, and I like to read fucked up people. So the fact that she said she's not a morning person, I was like, okay, I can listen to this shit. Right. But one of the interesting things I, I found in that podcast was that, that their audacity that their way is right. Yeah. It's one of the things that I've always struggled with. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for instance, I have always felt that my way was right too, but I've never said it. Right. And it's not that I think my, and this is interesting. I don't think my way is right for you. Right. And I don't think my way is right for anyone else. Right. I think my way is right for me. Yes. So for me, and they both said this and it kind of blew my mind. They... Do not fundamentally second guess themselves. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they're so present in daily life Mm -hmm. that they have a very hard time celebrating holidays. I understand both of those things very well. And, and, And I felt that way too. See, that's the thing. Like New Year's Day, Christmas Day. Yeah. Like, it's a struggle for me. Yeah. Because I gave a gift last Tuesday to someone that I cared about. Right. The Thursday before, someone said, well, I'm saving up to buy this jersey for my my mom for Christmas. And I went, hey, here's my card. Take it and go buy it. And they were like, what? And I was like, yeah, dude, just go do it. Like, right. like and, they, and they were like, well, do you need a receipt? No, I don't fucking need a receipt. I need you to be happy. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, like, when I get in the mood for Black Eyed Peas, I fucking go to the diner and I fucking eat them. Yeah. I don't wait for a day. Go to a diner. See, this is why I have, I have to cook more now. I got to get some equipment out here so I can cook. You can go to a diner to eat Black Eyed Peas. I don't. It'll take I just, me an hour. Yeah. Well, it would, but you also work a lot. It's true. I'm not down here enough. Look, guys, uh, what he just said is, is something that uh, uh, I do, too. Like, <clears throat> you know, I, I talked about uh, the holidays, talked about Christmas, I talked about Thanksgiving. You know, um, when I was a kid, any of the pagan holidays I'm, I'm into, you know, Easter, holiday, Christmas, you know, I, I get into those. And I just would not do the Hallmark holidays. I wouldn't do Valentine's Day and I wouldn't do, uh, you know, I wouldn't do much for Mother's Day. You know, I love my mother, but I tell her that every day. It seemed weird to me that there was a special day where I had to make special effort to tell my mother that I loved her. It was it was it was very strange. And so I didn't do much. I don't didn't do much for Father's Day. I didn't do much for uh, fucking Arbor Day. Any other fucking other holidays are pagan holidays. Uh, and as I got older, that kind of spread to all the other holidays. Like, I have to work up a lot of effort to uh, get into Christmas. I was very proud of myself this year for actually buying gifts uh, early enough to just wrap them for Christmas. Because normally, I just forget about that shit all the way through December. Okay. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm just going through and taking my kids to, to, to see pretty lights and shit because they're up. You know, it's like I'm... It, it, does, it didn't really have any uh, significance for... Because I've... I've I've given shit to my kids the entire year. Like the hard, the hard thing for me, but people are like, what do you want for Christmas? I'm a fucking, no, I've already got everything that I want. Right. It's not that I didn't have any wants. I just supplied them throughout the year or I supplied them to my family throughout the year. They don't need anything. Right. 
You know, all the shit that I bought my daughter, it's just kind of sitting there. Yeah. She's just living her life like she normally does because she's always, she's always, you know, pretty content. So, yeah, I, I totally get what, 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 what Ben is saying because I figured out early on that Christmas could happen at any time. Yeah. Like Christmas is dope. Yeah. But it's an everyday thing. Well, like life is dope. I don't. That's what I'm saying is that I don't mind celebrating holidays that other people celebrate. Yeah. What I do mind is the implication or the comments or the verbiage that I have to wait on that day to do it. Right. See, that's that's one of the things that so I get a lot of shit for not meditating. From who? Uh, from my dad, from my family, from people who who meditate, uh, and from other people who are like very active in that they set routines to like on Thursday at seven o'clock, we go meditate. Isn't that a weird thing if you meditate to then be upset by somebody else not meditating? Yes, it is. It's, it's, it, it's actually like anti-Buddhism. Okay. I'm just making sure that my head wasn't right. A hundred, a hundred percent. But, but here's what I've argued with people for almost a decade. Oh, sure. I'm meditating now. Yes. Now, now you say, how is that possible, Ben? You're running your mouth. No, actually you fucking goddamn motherfucking fuck. (laughs) <laughs> I'm not running my mouth. I'm actually considering <laughs> what's coming out, and I'm considering, is it the right moment to speak? Have right. I considered how many times I want to say fuck in that sentence? Dude, I'm totally going to have to go back and unpack that sentence. <laughs> that was great. Oh, CAO, no. That's your clip, buddy. <laughs> put that put that series of bleeps into the uh, into an advertisement. So so to me, that's the 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 big thing here is that I understand that other people can't package this, market it, sell it, and teach children how to do it. Right. But again, you motherfucking goddamn piece of fuck. I'm not trying to teach children. Right. I'm trying to get through life without harming myself or others to the best of my ability in a way that allows me to pursue happiness. I think this is the reason why these things don't change the world. Like, even though they're great. Like, this lady wrote a book, and I'm sure it's a great book. Yeah. You know, uh... Gary V has written like I don't know, how many fucking books has Gary written? He's been written a bunch of books. Does a lot of talking. It's not really changing the world. It's changing some lives, but you can count those lives. Right. It's a countable number of people yeah. that have been right. affected by Gary V. Right. It's a countable number of people that have been affected by Brene Brown. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. There's not a critical mass or right. critical movement. Right. Uh, because. It's still just one person's way. It's still just, and that person can is like other people. Yeah, but it's a countable number of people that are like this person. Right. Like Gary Vee will tell you straight up. He's talking mostly to entrepreneurs. Right. And there are not that many entrepreneurs. You know, people that can get up and do their own shit on their own all day. Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it's it's very unusual. It's very unusual, and it's very difficult to do. Even when it's even if it's your bag, it's still hard to do. Oh, I've made the argument that it's less. Uh, there's a smaller percentage of uh, entrepreneurs, true entrepreneurs. Gary Vee would appreciate this percentage, by the way. I believe it's harder to be an entrepreneur than it is to be a poker player. Mm. And and I believe that be, becoming a professional poker player is a much smaller percentage than becoming a surgeon, not just a doctor, Mm -hmm. but a surgeon. Right. So if you look at the percentage of people who become skilled surgeons, becoming a professional poker player is less than that. Becoming an entrepreneur, I believe, is less than that. It's less than that. It's very popular to try. Yes. It's It's very good on the attempt. I just, like when I look at Tom Dwan... A professional poker player. To me, I see that resident 
uh, uh, shoulder surgeon mm-hmm. at John Hopkins. Right. I know how hard he worked. I know how many hours he put in. And people tell me all the time, they say, Ben, he's 30. Yes, yeah. he's been playing professional poker since he was 13. Yeah, he's, he's and they say, well, you, he couldn't have put in that much work. There's 24 hours in a day, and he did it close to 18 hours a day for a decade. Yeah, every day. That every day. makes him Jesus. Yeah. Like, you know, that makes him probably, he probably has more hours in than the surgeon. Yeah, I mean, because you can do <laughs> professional poker continually all night, all day, all night, all day. Well, and he was born again. He is, uh, if he's only 30 years old now, he's born in 1990. So yeah, there's no the reason, there's no reason he can't get on a plane, fly to Abu Dhabi, uh-huh. make enough money to buy the plane, and fly back. And fly back on his own plane. <laughs> and you and I are thinking it's Tuesday. Right. You know? Yeah. So. But again, you can't package that and teach it to children. That, Absolutely but, that, not. but that's not what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah, you're not trying to do it, and he's not trying to right. do it. But there are people who, who believe fully that what they do every day is applicable to every to every other person. Yes. Uh like I believe that is fundamentally not gonna happen. Right. Like it's just like some things just don't work for like her uh, idea about uh mourning people. Yeah. You know, she's not a morning person. She started getting up early, mm-hmm. and that led to success. That could be true. That does not work for me. Right. Like, I've already I've already tried it. Now, the interesting thing about it is, and this is what I find fascinating about the book, mm-hmm. she doesn't actually think you have to get up early. Mm-hmm. What she wants you to do is to think about what habits you want to create when you wake up. Sure. That's so. So, so in other words, she puts her phone in another room Mm -hmm. because she wanted to be successful. And she noticed when the phone was in the same room Mm -hmm. and she was trying to sleep, she noticed that she had developed a 10 year habit of bad sleeping. Mm -hmm. She then noticed that when she got up, she jumped on Twitter, she jumped on Instagram, she did these things, right? Mm -hmm. She did not create a habit of first thing in the morning, what do I want to do, Mm -hmm. right? So now she does get up and get on Twitter and Instagram and whatnot, but it's because she wants to. It's not because it's an unconscious thought. Right. Basically what she's describing, and I think you would like this about it, even though she's hard to listen to, she's not particularly my style of speaker, She's basically arguing Ender's game. Yeah, I'm about to say it just it sounds like Orson Scott Card. Yeah, it's That's, very so. I've I've implemented a lot of that in my life already, quite frankly. Yeah, and it's but it's very interesting to read it from someone not like me. Yeah, but I admire that a she's written two books and she's younger than me. B she's attracted enough attention that Gary V is her mentor. Uh huh, and. See that she has the confidence to say to a person calling in on the phone, I'm sorry, you're just wrong. This is actually the way it is. And one day you'll realize that. Yeah, that's I'm I'm not (laughs) angry. I'm not angry. angry I'm not upset. You're just wrong. Yeah. And for a 28 year old, some odd white woman in America to be that mature like I was seeing like a vision of like Obi-Wan Kenobi in female form. Yeah. And I was like, dude, this Amy chick is on one. Like, like she's ben, doing something ben right. He does that all the time. Like, you know, you're you're wrong, but he's 40. You know, what I was like, well, and also most of the time I'm joking because most of the time I'm wrong. Yeah. And like if like if we if we if we start taking count, like I was getting a lot of shit for that episode where I told Mike he was wrong about yeah, yeah. the history of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, I told and, the, about, oh, the, yeah. about the Clinton impeachment. Oh, yeah. The, and and I, I dogpiled on him because right. fuck Mike. Yeah. No, <laughs> it was fucking great, dude. Like, I, and I was just like, well, you know, and y'all are still wrong. And they're like, how? We have history on our side. And I responded with, history is always rewritten by the oppressor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, on that note, we're going to take a break. 
got everybody dancing, dog. Y'all on that X, I'm a sentinel, standing tall. I'm trying to stand still. Please don't be in the dog. They're throwing jazz at me to challenge my rap savvy. I sway like Callaway. I'm a All right, you're back with Tattoo with Children. Uh, we're just we're shooting shit here about the uh, uh, things that are interesting us uh, so far in 2020. Uh, so in 2020, I'm fascinated already. <laughs> 2020 has already gotten my goat with how quickly it's going to uh, attempt to derail. Really? Like this, yeah, it's, 2020 is going to be one. There's there's nothing wrong, okay? Yeah. I want to start out with that. There's nothing wrong. Nothing bad has happened uh, to change my mind about I, w- I went hardcore on 2020's The Year. I'm still there. Okay. But 2020 is going to test everybody's resolve. And here's how I know this. So uh, New Year's Eve, I work New Year's Eve. And so I get off at 11, right before uh, midnight. Okay. And so uh, my sister texts me. She's uh, throwing a little party at her house and to come by. And I say, well, I'm working. Let me see if uh, my wife wants to uh, take, take the kids over. Mm-hmm. And my sister takes back, ah, uh, this is going to be not for your wife per se. It's going to be uh, me and my ex-husband, and you know that we like to drink and get ratchet as fuck. It's going to be real loud and black as shit. It's not really her bag. Okay. You know? And I was like, look, if, you're, if your kids can do it, my kids can do it. Right. So I'll, I'll leave up to her. Yeah. But I'm, but I'm going to tell her about it. Sure. Now, I'm thinking like my sister, that my wife's going to be like, no, I ain't doing that shit. You know, right. with a bunch of Negroes, I don't know. I was shocked. She hit me back with, yeah, I don't want to drive that late with drunk people, but come pick us up and get off of work and we'll go. Wow. I was, yeah, I was blown away. Okay. I'm like, well, fuck it. We're, we're, we're doing 2020 different. Okay. That's, we're going to be different. So I get off work. I rush over. I grab my wife and my daughter. And we uh, head back over to my sister's house. We get up to this my sister's door, and she walks out and doesn't let us walk in. And it's wow. cold as fuck that night. Okay. And so she's just at the door. She hugs my daughter. Yeah. And says, uh, listen, guys, we uh, just heard that my uh, ex's mother just died. Okay. And so this is her kid's grandmother. Okay. And uh, particularly my niece, who I love to death, yeah. was very close to this lady. Yeah. Like, this lady reminds me a lot of your mother, actually, yeah. Ben, where yeah. she is just the warmest person mm-hmm. you ever meet. Like, she, she's never met friends. She only has family. Right. And so she died. And so everyone inside is broken. Right. And so I came over to, to celebrate New Year's. With the right. party, it's now 11.50, and Dapple, hush. a matriarch has passed. Yeah. And so we go in, and uh, we're, <laughs> we're just hugging people, and, you know, my, my daughter is crying because her cousin is crying very hard because he just lost his grandmother. Right. And, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it hit me real hard. It's like, okay. 2020. This is a this is a challenge, but it's not a bad challenge. Like I came to celebrate, and I'm doing something different. But what I'm doing is just is almost exactly the same, because at the end of the year, I'm always I'm celebrating to celebrate having my family. I'm celebrating that this year. We are going to love each other the way we did last year. And this is the perfect opportunity to demonstrate that for my daughter. Say, okay, here is how you comfort somebody in grief. Remember that what they're going through, you will also go through. Remember that empathy is very important. Remember that compassion, like all the lessons are just laid out. And so it became this really big opportunity. And my daughter grew in front of my eyes. Yeah. She became a stronger person, a kinder person, Mm -hmm. as I looked at her through that night. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I became very, very grateful for everything that's going to happen this year. Instantaneously. I knew instantly. As soon as it happened to me, I said, there is absolutely 8 million other people that had this exact same scenario happen to them at the exact same time. Yeah. 
Well, it's interesting that you say that because I uh, I was texting my daughter this morning, uh, my the twenty year old daughter, uh, who started twenty twenty exactly opposite. Mm-hmm. She started twenty twenty with making the front page of the paper. Yeah, like what? What is going on in I Lufkin, found Texas? That the next day. Ben, I was so like I, <laughs> the text I I put on Instagram and I immediately just went yeah yeah twenty twenty baby we in here yeah, well it's like okay first of all we're in a deeply like Bible Belt dude Southern Baptist like I honestly was afraid they were gonna <laughs> burn his daughter as a witch if she yeah, kept up terrible like two branches fall on the ground and people are like don't drive down Mantooth the devil's down there. <laughs> It's like, it's no, no we just got to pick up the branches, man. Like, what? It is straight up the truth. And then I get to, like, 2020, and it's like, front page of the Lufkin Daily News, we ask a tarot reader about 2020. And Literally. here is her, and here is 70 paragraphs of what she said. Dude, they did the front page, and then the inside, right. where Megan, my friend Ben's daughter, who I love, yeah. I love Megan. Right. She did a tarot reading for a city. Right. She yes. read Lufkin, <laughs> Texas. But and, and, and we both love that, but we're also a little shocked that they printed it. They printed it pro- prominently. Right. Like he, like her like they didn't do yeah. like a picture of his daughter. Like right. go on Instagram onto my on, onto my account, uh that's Madara Shadow. Like if you go on there, I have a post of the of the uh, uh front page Lufkin Daily. Where it's just, it's one of those cutout silhouettes of his daughter in full. She's like dominating across the fold. Yeah. Holding up her tarot cards. Yeah. Like and, she she hit those people, man. And, and it blew my mind. And and so like, so yeah, she started with like, great. <clears throat> but then, so uh, it's January 2nd. Yeah. So, so we had a little issue this morning. Uh, you know, the 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 household didn't start off great. Uh, you know, just a little family stuff. You know how yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you know how it'll be. And uh, and so she texted me and she said, uh, "Hey, Dad, uh, Xander's uh, my son's run to Tyler is going late. Can you come back to the house and pick me up?" You know, and I say, "Yeah," and we work out the details of that. And then I text, I just, I felt like, I, I like reopened the text and read her message and I was like, okay, there's nothing wrong with what she's saying, but like I'm feeling, I'm feeling some type of way about this. Mm-hmm. And so I texted her back and I said, hey, remember that your circumstances don't define you. Your choices define you. And your mindset influences your choices. Right. Let the rest go. Yes. What I was trying to say was, this this thing that is affecting the household this morning it didn't happen to you but right. but also like you said if you're a human being it probably will happen to it you, will at, happen some to you at some point at some point yes but your circumstances do not define you what defines you is the choices you make yes. so what impacts the choices you make your mindset your mindset impacts your choices. Your choices affect who you are. Yes. So every, like every, a- everything else, that I, I feel like to, I, I wrapped up in a text message what you were saying to your daughter. Yes. Like, hey, these are bad circumstances. But, yeah. But we walked, it, we walked but, into a situation. Yeah. But the situation isn't bad. Right. And we're not bad for being in it. Right. And the people who are here, they're crying and they're sad, but they're not bad. No, like they're, they're not. not in a poor position. Yeah, they're experiencing something that you you are also human. You will experience. Uh-huh. So now we have to but this this experience while not bad, while not good, it isn't who we are. It's just something that we're going through. Yes. It's a circumstance that we're experiencing. Yeah, never attempt to make the situation better. Never attempt to change your circumstances that cannot be changed. Yeah. Like, this cannot be changed, so don't try to change it. Yeah, people say, well, we could live longer. Okay, that's fair, but not in East Texas. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's fair. We could, we might. 
We might be healthier we, later. We, we, we may. You know, the human, the human race may get to a point that we're like, you know what? If you don't eat collard greens from the age of 21 to 28, you'll live longer. Yeah. You know, but you need to eat a fuck ton of them from 28 to 40. I don't know. They'll, they'll come up with they'll some fix, shit. They'll figure it out. Yeah. They'll put it into a pill. We'll and, then, and we'll be like 300 years old, which sounds horrible. great and terrible at the same time. That sounds horrifying. Um, if that's the case, I want to be like Baby Yoda and be like 58. And like still making baby noises, you know what I mean? They're like, "What's what's fifty eight year old Ben doing over? Oh, he's taking a shit on the side of the road, you know? Like, how great is Baby Yoda though? Anyway, baby, baby, the child is not Yoda. I know it's not Yoda, but it's so it's. I know that, but that's what I love about it. By the way, (laughs) the Mandalorian's been out like two months, and not one goddamn person can tell me what race Yoda is. No one knows. That's the great, that's the, to see, now the lore. Now I'm excited. Because the we're still lore, writing the story. The lore of the story is so strong that the internet is calling it the only thing they know. And the other, see, here's, here's what's fucked me up about Star Wars. We're off track, or maybe we're on track, I don't know. We're, what's fucked me up about Star Wars is that The Last Jedi came out. Yeah. I think it was probably the most hated movie of the decade at the very end of the decade. By the way, I still love The Last Jedi. Like, of course he does. He's gonna love anything that you hate. But it was, <laughs> I have I haven't seen it. I'm probably but I don't think I can hate it as much as everybody else does. Okay. Because I didn't go I'm not gonna go into it expecting to like it or expecting it to be good. Whereas a lot of people expect like you know it's the end of the it's the end of the story, so you gotta a lot to live up to and blah blah blah. Look here's the thing about The Last Jedi. The reason you hate it isn't because it's bad. You hated it because you know what it means. It means that they are stopping making new stories involving the Jedi. You see, that's that's your problem. Yeah. The whole, like, it's the, it's the not starting The Last Jedi, it was Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. The writers say like they're not making any more story about the Skywalkers, and right. that's why you hate it. Right. Because, like, they, because you know in your heart of hearts they should still be writing that story. Right. It hasn't been done to its to its potential at all. Okay. Well, here's another reason I love it, though. Okay. They're lying to you. He and and this is this is Ben's. Uh, I, I knew he was gonna you, go here. you know, you know, yeah. I was gonna go here, bro. Here's he's he's yeah. So go ahead and go. Every you everyone is fucking pissed off because Disney's quitting. Okay. Yeah. Everyone's pissed off because there's no more stories about the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Right. The Jedi Order is dead. They're gone. They're this. They're that. Guys, I have news for you. Star Wars and the Jedi have made a trillion, gazillion, manillion, fuck you goddamn fucking motherfuckers. They made a shit ton of money. They're going to keep writing the story. They're just telling you they're not. That's entirely possible. It's I'm, not I, possible. It's going to happen. I, I am going to, for the first time on this podcast, because it's 2020, I'm going to fucking look you in the eye and tell you that this is my very fair, very first very first Gary V moment. Okay. I will fucking put this on the internet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's going on the internet. Go ahead. They will create a, an entirely new Jedi story. Okay. Before 2030. This is coming from uh, Pirate Ben on Tattoo with Children. January 2nd. And January the 2nd of 2020. And when it happens... I'm going to come back Every, to this. Everybody is going to have to say yeah. that Ben Harbuck, was Howard right. Ben on Tattoo with Children, right. said it first. Do you think by 2030 it's going to be illegal to put your finger on the internet? No. See, that's what I'm concerned by, too. I don't think I, so. I, I really enjoy flipping off the internet. I, I, don't, I, don't, think it, I don't think that'll be illegal. Okay, because that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, Gary Vee doesn't flip people off enough. I know why. He's a very nice person. I, in fact, am not a very nice person. Right. So I'm going to keep flipping off the internet. Yeah, I, I think you should. No, I just, I just, I just want to make sure everybody comes back tattooed with children. Episode fifty one, and go remember when Pirate Ben said that. Yeah, we're gonna be at episode like twenty two thousand. If they're gonna do it, it's not gonna be close to twenty thirty. It'll be, it'll be twenty twenty three. Probably, and it'll be like the return of the return of the Skywalker. You know where I think they're gonna go, and I think they've set it up perfectly. Okay, because Disney is the smartest 
Yeah, look, I like, let's guys, keep, like, I don't, let's, let's, I, let's don't keep in mind, I don't like them. Let's keep in mind that Rise of Skywalker is a fairly new movie, so we don't want to do too many spoilers. No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you haven't seen it? Yet? No, okay. I haven't oh, seen it yet. God. But here, here, here is what they're set up. Ray, I told you, I told you, I'm fucking on one. It's 2020. What, what, I am fucking not hiding anymore. What if you hate the movie? What if you hate the movie? I couldn't possibly hate the movie. <laughs> there is a shadow bin over my shoulder, like Aijin, going, you will love this movie. By the way, if you guys haven't seen Aijin, A-J-I-N, on Netflix, give it a try. He hasn't seen the movie, guys! I think I just killed Ray. Okay, so listen, uh, what mark are we at? Oh, God. Uh, what um, mark are we at? We're at 4522. Okay, so at 40. Okay, God. Okay, 4522. <laughs> so here's what they're going to do. I have not seen the movie, and I will predict. Okay. That the, it's not only that they're going to keep making Jedi stories. Are you going to stop laughing long <laughs> enough for me to. I'm trying. <laughs> you can me go. Big he baby tears. He had me going so hard. <laughs> he had seen the movie. No. Like, no, this is a great movie. No, I, I have no idea. This movie no, I don't have, I work for a living. Oh, shit. Okay, go ahead. So, what they've set up is they're going to bring back the secret. They're, they're going to tell, the next story they're going to tell is when Luke, there was about two decades when yes. Luke went off and wasn't seen. Yeah, there was a, a gap in there. Okay. So the next story they're going to bring up is him running the Jedi kindergarten. And and that's what it was, by the way. Yeah. He ran a Jedi kindergarten on this planet that no one had ever heard of. He built the buildings. He created the, the you know, he did everything. Yeah. He did his, you know, use the force to create the atmosphere, right? Blah, blah, blah. Right. He planet built. My point is that's the story they're going to bring back next mm -hmm. is because it makes the most sense because they won't be trapped in the 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 what, what's the word? They won't be trapped in the 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 sacred text. The yeah, what, yeah. What, do you, what do you call it? When you, the canon. Yes. They won't, canon. they won't be trapped in canon anymore. Right. So they'll be able to do nine more movies off of the kindergarten Jedi. Yeah. Right? And then create their whole lives. I might actually get shot for saying this tomorrow because this is Je this is Disney's like 100 year but, but, plan. But they will, they, if they do it before these, the, new, the, the last trilogy started, they got to kill all of them. Yeah. So they're, so they're all, so we, so we know, so we know the end of that. I think they're going to have, if they do that, they're going to have to have some of them escape the second Jedi purge of Luke's. Jedi, like if Jedi, if, if they have, they're going to like retcon that Luke was hiding like six, you know, of his Jedi somewhere on a different planet, didn't tell anybody. Yes, but that's but that's actually the fact. There was yeah. a there was a planet where he ran the Jedi kindergarten that had well, never been talked about. But well, well, Ben was there with it, like the yeah yeah Obi Wan. No, not that the Ben Solo was there with him. The the, the 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 Sith in the second trilogy. I haven't seen the movie, so I don't know that. The, <laughs> they've already they've already killed all those kids, according to like they're gonna have to retcon that he had some that that yeah. Ben couldn't go kill. Well, I think they're the, yeah no, I agree with that. I just think they're they're gonna make the argument that one Ben didn't go kill them all, and two Ben didn't know where all of them were. Right. Gonna, because be. Luke, because Luke was flying around the goddamn universe. Because remember, there was that book that wasn't canon. But there was that book where Luke got trapped for like three and a half years yeah. in a dead Star Destroyer yeah. and made friends with the ship's computer. Yeah. And like the ship's computer like talked to him for three and a half years. Dude, uh, by the way, great, if you get, if you guys didn't know this, the whole last trilogy was all about the, the extended universe. They just mined stories from the extended universe. Yeah, absolutely. And then they yeah. just con condensed them down to make three movies out of it. Yeah, and it's completely, by the way, it's not canon, but it's completely worth it it's to go not read all that dude, shit. read that <laughs> Shit. That it's is such good. good stuff. Yeah, you could read every Star Wars book ever made, and I don't think it'd be a waste of your time. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, 
you, be, because we're, 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 we're deep down a rabbit hole in this, and I've already died once. Uh, so we're going to wrap it up. You've been listening to Tattoo with Children. I've been your host, Flavor Ray. You can find Tattoo with Children on Facebook, at Tattoo with Children. You can find us on Instagram, at Tattoo with Children. You can find us on Twitter, at Tattooed with. You can find me on Twitter, at Hunter Vanguard. That's one word, Hunter Vanguard. You can find us uh, find me on Instagram, at Madara Shadow. You can find Ben on Instagram, at Black Crow Brother, and also at Black Spot Tattoo Company. You can find my uh, good friend, CIO No Pain, on IG, at CIO.Pain. Uh, and you can find him also at pain.points or no, CIO pain, no dot, and pain.points. Pain spelled P A Y N E. And you can also, uh, if you're of a mindset, it's 2020, do something different. Uh, 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 do something that, uh, that's, that's, that sparks your juices. And go ahead and drop a fiver on our Patreon. You just go to patreon.com and search for Tattoo with Children. We'll pop up. You'll see my eyeballs eyeing you uh, with that come hither look that I'm so famous for. Uh, to try and get that $5 out of your pocket. Uh, we have other tiers as well, higher tiers, if you're a, a more of a big spender type. Uh, and I will do everything uh, that you ask me to do on those tiers, I guarantee you. Uh, and uh, that'll be our show for today. Uh, until I hear from you again, I want you to take care of yourselves, okay? Take care of yourself or take care of everybody else. And remember that I, if no one else does, I actually love you. Love you guys. Portion of his rap at the core is ancient, is supported like a pack of some warm to